If you're pro-life, you're going to love this week's video. So since East Den has a strong theme of eggs and chicks and bunnies and lambs and new life, we thought it was about time that we talked about reproductive rights, especially considering how much they've been under attack recently. There's two sides to reproductive rights, as there are with most medical issues. On the one hand, there's preventative medical intervention, and on the other hand, there's medical intervention for after something could happen. So in this instance, it's for if you've ended up pregnant. I'm going to look first at preventative, which is birth control. Here in the UK, birth control is free. You can go to a specialist clinic for free, or you can go to your doctor, and they will also prescribe you with free contraceptive medication. That's because in the UK, we have the NHS, which, let me tell you, is fucking brilliant. In the US, I understand you have a quite different medical system. As far as I understand it, though, and please, please do correct me, because I'm probably going to say some stuff wrong, you have health insurance, which you either pay for yourself or you get through an employer, and the debates that have been going on recently have been to do with whether or not it should be mandatory for your health insurance to include birth control, or whether they should be able to include it and force you to pay for it yourself. And then presumably if you don't have health insurance, then you're screwed either way and you just have to buy your own birth control, or... So the loudest objection I've heard to birth control being mandatorily covered by your health insurance is that your health insurance shouldn't have to pay for you to have sex. Firstly, as I'm sure people with vaginas are well aware, this demonstrates a incredible ignorance about how birth control actually works. This isn't like a condom or Viagra that you use when you want to have sex. Contraceptive birth control for people with vaginas has to be either taken daily or just works continuously until you get it changed. This is a package of birth control pills. There are days going all the way around the edge. So you can see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's because you have to take a pill every single damn day. And if you don't take a pill every day, then it doesn't work. Other forms of birth control are even simpler. You don't have to take a pill every day. You just have an injection or you have a device inserted. And when it runs out, you get a new one. Whether you have sex or not, doesn't matter. That's it. Secondly, a lot of people take birth control for entirely non-contraceptive reasons. I was one of those people. When I started taking the pill, it wasn't so I could have lots of unprotected sex. It was because my periods were crippling me. And I don't even have it that bad compared to a lot of other people. People take birth control pills to lessen their flow of their blood, to stop anemia, to relieve crippling menstrual cramps, to relieve extreme PMS, and to manage polycystic ovarian syndrome, which, if left unattended, can result in you becoming infertile. People don't just take birth control lightly, either. If you're taking hormonal birth control, it comes with a buttload of fun side effects, and it can often be that you have to try a whole different bunch of types of birth control until you find one that actually works without fucking you up more than the problem that you started taking it to avoid. And finally, it's just more economical and effective to prevent something from happening than it is to treat it after it happens. That's why so many health clinics will offer you condoms for free. It is significantly cheaper to give someone a condom than it is to treat them for an STI, to give them an abortion, and or to raise a child. Which brings me to the other side of reproductive rights, which is abortion rights. Because apparently it's not enough to make it as difficult as possible for someone to be able to prevent themselves from getting pregnant. People are determined to then make it as difficult as possible to terminate a pregnancy if they do find themselves in an unwanted situation. This is done by pushing back the limit up to which you can have an abortion. So you say you can't have one after 24 weeks, after 20 weeks, after 18 weeks, and pushing further and further back, closer to the point of conception. This is done by requiring extensive counselling sessions for the person who wants to get an abortion, or multiple signatures from doctors to give consent. And more recently, it's being done by emotionally and physically abusing the person using tactics such as a child's vaginal ultrasound and requiring that a person be, have their fetus described to them and shown to them before they're able to have an abortion. And all this is of course done in the name of protecting the right to life. They don't care about the life of the person who's pregnant. They don't care about the life of the child after it's born. As long as that baby is born, at all costs, that's all that matters. If they really cared about protecting life, then they'd be funneling all that money that goes into pro-life campaigns into ensuring adequate child care provisions for everyone. Into making sure that the most vulnerable people in society are educated and protected against unwanted pregnancies. And into ensuring that all parents have the resources and support to raise their children. As ever, I'll put some links below and please leave comments and uh, response videos uh, with your thoughts on the whole reproductive rights issue. And I will see you next week. Bye!